Radio, live on TV on ESPN2, and we could not make a trip to New Orleans without bringing in one of the great athletes in this city's history and a friend of ours. Archie Manning is on the OnStar Hotline. Good morning, Archie. Welcome back to Mike and Mike. Good morning, Mike. How y'all doing today? Well, we're doing great, and, and what we have been struck by, and clearly this city is your home, uh, but what we have been struck by in the time that we've been here is just the outpouring from the people in New Orleans that want us to tell the world that the city is back, who feel so hopeful and who feel that this game tonight is such an enormous symbol of, of a revival, if you will, for a city that no one is trying to pretend doesn't still have major problems, but a city that is making a desperate effort to return on a national level, and tonight feels like a big step towards doing that. Well, it really is. It's a, it's a, it's a big day in New Orleans. It's a, it's a great news day. You know, I tell people... Um, the storm is still in the news every day here, the radio, TV, uh, newspapers, and uh, we kind of get up looking for good news, and some, some days we get some good news, and, and, and some days things don't look so good, but uh, this, is a, this is a good news day, and it's a uh, emotional day, but good, good emotions. You know, this whole thing is certainly, as y'all can realize and understand, been very emotional for people, and you lose your home, or you lose loved ones, your business goes down, it can be very depressing. I think uh, the fact this is going on here has got everybody's uh, spirits up, everyone's excited about it, anticipating it. I think also the fact the Saints kind of got a start over going on, they've been on the road two weeks, they're 2-0, and, and coming home to play this, the Superdome, which is a big part of this city, is reopening, so um, it, it's a red-letter day, guys. Yeah, no doubt about it. Saints being 2-0 and certainly does help that situation out, and we'll get into what you're doing tonight in a moment. Let's go, go back to Sunday for a minute and your two sons uh, playing ball. When Peyton did, ran the naked boot for the two-yard touchdown run, did it seem like it took him an awfully long time to get to the end zone, Archie? Well, you know, I'm a, I really gave him a hard time last night because somebody said that's, that's the first time in four years he's, he's scored a touchdown. I mean, you know, that's a that's a college career, one touchdown your whole time he gets in there. But uh, he loves that play. Y'all have seen him do it. You know, he, he started in high school, he did it in college. And uh, uh, I, I, I agree that you shouldn't do it too often. But maybe, you know, he can get back to it again before four years. Because, Mike, as you know, if they ever, if that guy, on the safety or the end or whoever's coming, around the corner if they think you, if they think you're gonna run it or recognize it they're gonna hit him right in the mouth that's gonna be really bad he's not gonna outrun him or get around him. <laughs> Mike and Mike and Archie Manning with us on, a, on this special day here in New Orleans. One more on yesterday, and then we'll get back to tonight, and that would be your other son, Eli, whose team did not have a good day yesterday at all with a, a bad loss in Seattle. He brought them back in the fourth quarter to make the score look closer than it was, but there was a lot of frustration evident on the sideline and in the postgame, and I just wonder, did you get a chance to talk to him after that game and what he might have had to say about it? didn't get to talk to him. I, I left him a message, got uh, texted him, but you know, they they got a long, long flight back and, and got in late, so I haven't talked to him. But he, you know, y'all know Eli. He, he, he's not going to tell me anything. And uh, I'm sure he's disappointed the way they started yesterday. I was, uh, as I always am, I was actually proud of him the way he hung in there. You know, a game like that, especially in that place, can just go real, real, real bad like that. I was, I was proud once again that he kind of rallied his troops and, and got them going a little bit and gives you, you know, they got an open date this week, so you get at least a little something to be positive about going in there, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't stick my nose in that stuff, and, uh, you know, post-game, you've got guys that are, it, it, there's a lot of media covering them, there's a lot of things come out of there, that kind of seems the norm, but I, it, it's no place for me to stick my nose, and Eli, Eli will be fine, he's a young quarterback who's just kind of going week to week and trying to get better. All right, and Archie, obviously tonight with the football coming back here to New Orleans, it is a perfect opportunity for people who have been helping and would like to continue to help with the Katrina recovery effort. Here's a good chance to do it, and you'll be a part of that tonight on the Home Shopping Network. Tell everybody what they can do to see you, buy some NFL merchandise, and most importantly, help with the recovery effort here in New Orleans. Well, that's true, Mike. Home Shopping, I'll be live tonight at 7 o'clock on Home Shopping Network's uh, NFL shop. And uh, home sh uh, HSN is doing their part trying to shine a light on this recovery, all the recovery efforts here in New Orleans. So a portion, portion of the proceeds tonight from the NFL shop will go to the, the Saints Hurricane uh, Relief Fund. And uh, uh, that's a great gesture on their part. So many people throughout the country have uh, sent 
donations and money and people that come down here and churches and college students in the summer and their summer uh, spring breaks and so forth to help out. So people throughout the, the nation have uh, felt our hurt down here and contributed and, uh, and we're indebted to everyone for what they've done. It's tonight, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 6 Central on the Home Shopping Network. Archie, we know how busy you are today with all that is going on. Thank you for a few minutes. Enjoy tonight, and, uh, and we'll talk to you again real soon. All right, guys. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Archie. Archie Manning, a New Orleans Saints legend. Is actually, look up over the top of your head, and his is the first yep. banner. They have some retired names and, uh, and banners here in the Louisiana Superdome. And the first one you see is Archie Manning right next to... Pete, Pete Maravich. Maravich. Wow, that's a nice twosome right that's, there. That's a good back-to-back, -back, yep. a one-two punch here of New Orleans sports legends. We are Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio and ES. Deuce McAllister, who's been hands-on in this recovery effort, as this is an area that he's been in for six years now. And he says the opening of the Superdome is much more than just the opening of another building. What's the one image that stands out in your mind most from when you first came back? Probably just seeing these people... Um, rescued and you know when they saw myself you know probably the first thing that they asked was did we win the game on uh, that Thursday night against the Oakland Raiders and, you know and that kind of tells you about their will and their resolve as far as I'm gonna survive some way but I want to know did my Saints win when you heard what happened in the Superdome what did you think well, you know, the first thing you think is just, you know, that couldn't have happened. You know, you're wishing that it didn't happen. You know, and some of the stories hopefully were fabricated, you know, in a lot of ways. But um, if it did, then the only thing you could do is just pray for them and try to move forward. People died there, 7 to 11. There's so many different reports on how many people really did die. You had a chance to have your first walk through there the other day. When you stepped into the Superdome, what were you thinking about? Well, you, you have an eerie feeling, you know, once you walk in, I mean, just because of, you know, some of the things that have been said about it. But, I mean, they've done a phenomenal job of just trying to change that image and change the look inside to where it's one that you're proud of. What did you think would happen in the Superdome? Um, long term, we probably wouldn't have returned. You know, for them to get the dome back up and running as quickly as they did, you know, is phenomenal. Why do you think it was so important to get it up and running? Well, I think it's important because I think that's the one symbol that gives this city some hope. If you can get this place to recover and, and back on its feet, then it gives people that are not here in New Orleans an opportunity and the possibility of maybe I can go home, you know. If, if the Superdome can return, then I can return as well. You're in the tunnel. The fans are cheering. Who will you be thinking about? Uh, you, you'll think about the, the hundreds and hundreds of people that lost their lives. You know, yeah, a lot of times when, when we talk about playing the game of football, you, you, you say you're going to play for somebody. This is definitely an opportunity to play for somebody, whether it's the people that want to come back home, whether it's the people that call themselves Saints fans. This is an opportunity for you to play for somebody. Joe Horn, had a, there was a quote from him the other day, your teammate, when asked about it, did he think he'd cry? You bet I'll cry. What do you think? I'll cry as well. You know, there will be a lot of tears in that, in that tunnel, you know, before the guys come out and even to hear that national anthem, you know, when it's being sung and um, just to see that crowd when, when they cheer for, for us when we're coming out of that tunnel, it will definitely be an emotional time. There was a quote, the same article that I, where I read about Joe. I believe you, you said something along the lines of you had to be a saint before and be a saint after to understand all of this. What do you mean by that? To think. 13 months ago, we had a hurricane, and these people, a lot of them are still without a lot of items or things that they um, lost in the storm, but you sold out every game, you know, a record number of, of season tickets have been sold, you know, that tells you the passion that they have for this team. The 2-0 and New Orleans Saints. That's correct. That smile sort of says it all. What's it, at this point, people didn't necessarily expect you to be 2-0. Matter. I mean, we just go out and play the game. Um, you know, when you've been through as much as some of the players on this team has been through, you know, you don't you don't really let anything surprise you. Win or lose, this may be a cliche. Do you win on Monday night because you're back at the Superdome playing? Fans win. We lose. <laughs> We don't, we don't take care of it unless we win that game. I mean, it'll, it'll still be a special moment for us, but um, our focus will be on winning that game. When you're out there and people come up to you and they see you, what, what do they say to you about your return, the fact that you are back? Oh, they're glad 
to see us. You know, they're glad that we're back home. You know, they're glad that we're back in New Orleans, and they're going to make sure that we're, we're going to stay in New Orleans. You know, these people, uh, they have a will about them that they're going to make sure that we're here in New Orleans for good. is certainly doing his part. He took some time out on Saturday to talk with us while he was at a foundation benefit. It was actually a fundraiser trying to raise money along with Drew Brees to help the local kids in this area get some athletic fields back up and running and get some of that athletic equipment that so many schools and so many athletes lost. So a good cause there for him as he continues to help. And exactly what we're doing here, the St. Augustine High School Marching Band with us. The tailgating has already begun as well. With its reopening tonight, the Superdome is no longer a symbol of what went wrong during Hurricane Katrina. Instead, is actually a sign of hope for the future. Hope that residents have clung to since the storm. Hope that they're finding in a 2-0 team. Hope that was obvious when the Saints sold out the stadium for the entire season for the first time in franchise history. Joining us now, a man who shares that hope, former longtime Saints quarterback and New Orleans resident, Archie Manning. Archie, it's good to have you back with us on a day where you can celebrate this city once again. Well, it is. It's a great celebration day. And it's a great day for New Orleans. Um, uh, you know, just the fact that the Dome's reopening and our football team is back. Uh, it, it's all part of the recovery uh, since Hurricane Katrina. And a big, and people say, how can this be part of it? It's just football. But emotionally, it, uh, the Saints are a big part of our community. And today is a, is a very emotional day for a lot of people. You threw the first touchdown pass inside that Superdome. Go back 13 months ago when you first started hearing about some of the devastating things that happened inside the Superdome. What did you think? Well, we all saw, you know, we had evacuated, so we saw some things on TV, and it didn't. You start hearing things. I had friends. Uh, I had I had some friends in the National Guard that, that were in there, and even at one point they say, you know, may have to tear the dome down. Well, you know if that happens, then... You're not going to have certain events here. We're probably not going to have a football team. And it's, it's, it's going to be, um, it's just going to kind of put New Orleans in a position to make everyone just more and more depressed. Right. So that's why I think today is so important that, uh, the, uh, that Doug Thornton uh, got this dome ready, that the league got the team back here, that the team's off to a good start. There's going to be a football game tonight, uh, you know, Monday night against uh, old arch rival. It's just it's, so many people are excited, and uh, it's a it's a good news day, Dana. That's kind of what we look for here now. We get, you know, I think I've told you that before. We get up every day looking for good news, right. and this is good news. So much bad news around. Some people may not understand. You keep talking about how this can help. How, how is football helping? How does a game help these people? Well, I think people need to know. I know a lot of people talk about Green Bay and how that, the, you know, that's such a unique uh, franchise of the 32 NFL. I, I think the Saints are a unique franchise, too. Uh, for the 40 years the Saints have been here, just a few years when the Jazz were here, and the last right. few years we've had the Hornets. And most of the time, it, it's kind of been a, a, a one, the only game in town. One more town. And uh, we... we we hadn't been great, you know, and won any Super Bowls or any championships, just been in the playoffs a, a few times. But the people have supported this team. There's great passion here uh, for, for the New Orleans Saints. And every weekend it, it, during the fall, I, I think the, it's the pulse of the whole city. I think everybody's disposition is kind of up or down a little bit, depending on how the Saints do on, do on Sunday. So the, the fact we were probably very close to losing them and now they're back and they're doing well and we're going to have you know the league has done a great job of setting up this moment and right. this uh this special game then uh, it's just a big day this is only i mean it's less than a mile away there are homes that need to be rebuilt mm -hmm. there is so much that still needs to be done and as great as this is what else does need to be done here in new orleans well we've got uh we, we've got a you know, a lot of problems. You could start uh, with, you know, I guess affordable housing is, is something that's a that's a real concern. You know, we're a destination city. We've got to get uh, we've got to get people coming back to our cities. Our hotels are just about up. Convention centers good. Restaurants are open, but people got to realize, you know, we're we're open for business, right. and uh, you, you, there are conventions that we have a lot of them here. They need they need to come back. People like to come here for a long weekend, have a good time. You you can do that now. So. Um, so they need to realize we're, we're open for business again, uh, but, but also kind of don't forget about the recovery. We've got a long way to go. Uh, you know, I, uh, we, we've got to do our own work. We, we need great leadership here that's been probably close to the kind of leadership we've had at the Dome from Doug, Doug Thornton and, and, and his people. 
and uh, we've got to continue to roll up our sleeves. But we still need we still need help, and we need people around the country to uh, remember us. All right, Archie. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. I know that the celebration will continue here. It sort of has that Super Bowl feel, and you're doing a little fundraising today too, right? Right. HSN. I'll be on the NFL shop tonight, and uh, we'll be on at seven o'clock. And I think the great thing about that is, is, is so many people have helped us here. Uh, HSN will be donating part of the proceeds toward the New Orleans Saints Hurricane Relief Fund. So they're helping out, too, as so many people around the country have. All right, Archie, thank you. Thanks, Enjoy Dan. the rest of today. Always it's good. Oh, always a pleasure having you. It's always good to have some of the good news coming out of here. We'll continue to talk. 1970 and Tom Dempsey. ...that people ask about when they walk in. Of course, sometimes they call him Jack Dempsey, but <laughs> that doesn't really matter. They, they are fans. They... Uh, they leave it all just like the players do. And the fans loved then and still idolized Dempsey. He and the city now have so much in common. With only one hand and half a kicking foot, Dempsey defied the odds to play pro football. New Orleans has always loved the underdog, and now New Orleans is the underdog. Dempsey agrees. Monday night means a lot. If you ever wore the black and gold, you don't like the dirty birds. You just don't like them. That's just the way that it is uh, for all of us. Uh, and to have them open up the dome with the crowd going wild and sell out, it's going to be phenomenal. It is going to be absolutely phenomenal. He's never been about woe is me. He's all about don't say I'm handicapped because I'm not. And I think more people here need to take that approach to what we're dealing with right now. And the people that have, I think, have already spurred recovery in many facets. And, and I think that's a good lesson to learn that Tom Dempsey has taught us all. When John Gilliam took the opening kickoff, goalpost to goalpost on the opening play of the franchise, things looked pretty good for the black and gold. But the fans have had little to cheer about since. Dempsey's kick. Well, the cheers haven't died away yet. They're, they're, it's amazing fans. They've, they've supported this team through the years uh, when we weren't very good. And, uh, and they keep coming back. They keep supporting. Dempsey also points to Saints owner Tom Benson once vilified for even the hint of moving the team to San Antonio. Now what a difference a year makes. Mr. Benson has stepped up this year. You know, he spent a lot of money on some players getting the people here to have a good football team. Uh, and, you know, Reggie Bush, uh, I know everyone else that he's Drew Brees, uh, Coach Payton. You know, he, he shelled it out to keep the team here. Ironically, with the return of Morton Anderson to the Falcons, with a 60-yard field goal of his own to his credit, the fabled kicker storyline continues for the Monday night game. Louisiana. But Dempsey's picking the homeboys to win. Just, may as well just go ahead and give everybody the day off. The mayor ought to just go ahead and, and just cancel everything that day. And let's have a mini Mardi Gras. And it can all come down to a kick. Check it out. 59-57, Marshall Foch. Janice and I have been married 53 years. We lived here 47 years. And, uh, and along came Katrina. Saints Stadium announcer Jerry Romick raised five children in a house that he does not intend to rebuild. The uh, Corps of Engineers may have fooled me once, but they're not going to fool me twice. Get the root and we transplant them. Thanks to a $185 million renovation, Romig's other home of 32 years has blossomed once again. Oh, magnificent. It, it, you have to, you have to admit, it looks great. It, it's just so bright, it's so exciting. It's, it's everything you want in a stadium. Romig will announce his 371st Saints game on Monday night. Inside a building he says now doubles as a metaphor. The city can be, again, a great, exciting place that we can overcome all of the, the misery of Katrina. Look what we've done here. Look, what, look what's happened here. This is the uh, communications booth, and we've been in this booth ever since the stadium opened. Anybody who has been in a game here in past years will immediately recognize that we have a new sound system. Matter of fact, just about everything in here is new except the trademark rasping baritone of a 76-year-old self-proclaimed fan who counts five Super Bowls among his most cherished Superdome memories. 
I did five of them uh, in New Orleans. And, but but this, this, this has the, the feeling of a Super Bowl plus, especially for the city, this, for what this means to the city of New Orleans, getting this, getting this team back and getting this place looking like it's looking good. This is great. We got a new stadium, literally. It's brand new on the inside. Tell Mr. Benson that. Yeah, well, I think Mr. Benson knows that. Yeah, I think he's, he, he'll, he's probably standing up and cheering this place. If not now, he certainly will be tonight when Jerry Romig once again fires up the microphone. Before we leave, can you just can you just give me one one first down Saint? Okay. <laughs> first down Saints. Rich Lenz, WDSU News Channel 6.